Obsidian is good for many things, but is habit tracking one of them? Let's find out. I will compare three different ways of tracking habits in Obsidian in terms of features and complexity. For each option, I will share what I like and don't like about it and what they are particularly good for, in my opinion, of course. I rate each plugin based on ease of use, that means how easy is it to set up and get results, and for judging the versatility, I look for four main criteria. Data visualization with charts, heat map functionality, a calendar view, and a text summary option. But I will not only talk about these plugins, I will also show you step by step how to set up each of them in your own vault. And if you want to save your valuable time, you can also download a fully configured vault to customize as you wish. And at the end of the video, I have a little bonus for you. Let me quickly set the stage and explain what we will try to do with each of these plugins. I usually track my habits in my daily notes, so this is also the assumption for this video. Obviously, this is not a must and you can adapt this according to your own preferences. You will have to adapt plugin settings and queries accordingly. I keep most of the tracked information in the daily notes' front matter, but some of it is in inline fields in the note content. In terms of data types, I am tracking numbers, yes, no or true, false values, text and formatted dates. For me, this is very fast and efficient. I create a daily note, set some items to true or false and enter data into two fields only. And here are the details about what we will be tracking. First, was habit X done? This is the true false option. I have a property called challenge one, which represents intermittent fasting. Quick explanation here. I use generic property names like challenge one, challenge two, because I like to map them to whatever habit is relevant for me in a certain period. It might be that I do intermittent fasting now, but starting in January next year, I want to track something else and then I can still keep my queries as they are and just need to change the label from intermittent fasting to whatever it is I'm tracking. I also have a property for workout and walk and another one for sport. Sport is true whenever workout or walk is true. How many repetitions were done of habit X? This is a numeric field. And here I have two fields. One is called challenge two, which currently represents push-ups, and challenge three, which stands for crunches. Then I track the sleep quality, which is basically a text property where I have red, yellow, or green emojis to represent it. Then I have body measures, which are inline fields rather than front matter fields. Here I keep track of my weight, my body mass index, BMI, and my fat percentage. Each of these are numeric values, of course. Now, depending on the tracked information, we will want to visualize it in one or more of these ways. As a chart, this could be a line chart, a bar chart, etc. A calendar for showing streaks, a heat map, which is exactly what you would imagine. And then I would also like to have a summary or additional information in text format. So I prepared a new vault with a few folders already. If you're working along, you can pause the video and build the same structure or you just use your own and adapt the queries on the way. I have a folder called 06BJ, stands for bullet journal. This is where I keep my daily notes. And 90Organize is a folder I have in all my vaults. I use it for storing and managing everything that is not actual content. It includes classes, templates, embeddable objects, etc. Keeping these things separate makes it easier to maintain and to merge the various vaults I am offering. Then we have a folder called Demos. Here I will demo each of the plugins. I leave the demos in the vault for your convenience. You can safely delete this folder when you don't need it anymore. Additionally, I install some community plugins. Some of those are required, others are merely for convenience. What we really need are the following. Calendar, Contribution Graph, Data View, Habit Calendar, Multicolor Markdown, Periodic Notes, Templater, and Tracker. Of course, if you decide to go with only one of the habit tracking plugins, you can safely remove the others. Now, let's see what we can do with all of that. Let's do this alphabetically and start with the contribution graph. As mentioned earlier, this has a similar feature range as the currently defunct heat map calendar, but additionally provides a very nice and simple user interface for configuring your heat map and calendar views. 
I also left a link to the plugin's website in the description, of course. The first thing we are going to do is to create a monthly overview to show on which days we did intermittent fasting. We open the command palette, the default hotkey is Control and P, enter country or contribution and select contribution graph at heat map. This opens a nice dialog box where we can define our basic and style settings. As a title, I enter intermittent fasting, including these emojis. Under graph type, we have three options, git style, month track and calendar. We will see all three of them in action. For now, I will choose month track. Under date range, we can either define a range of latest days, which will always show the defined number of days based on the current date. Alternatively, we can choose to show data for the whole last month or whole last year. The last option is to define a date range. I will do this by setting the start date to January 1st, 2024. If I do not define an end date, data until the current date will be shown. I will set the end date to December 31st, 2024, because I want to have an overview of the whole year. For the source parameter, we can choose all tasks and then use the filter options to narrow down which tasks shall be included. However, for showing my fasting discipline, we will select page as a source and enter the path to our daily notes. To make sure the data is presented on the correct date, we can use the system's file creation or modification time, the file name or a property on the page. I will go with the property simply because I sometimes create my daily notes in advance or after the actual day, so the system creation date does not help me here. But I do have a created property on these notes and that's what we are going to use. We leave the date field format set to auto detect. I would only change that if it does not recognize the date format correctly. Last but not least, we have the count field parameter. This is where we tell the plugin what to track. We select the page property and enter challenge one. If you skipped the setting the stage chapter, this is where I explained which field represents what. In this case, challenge one stands for the intermittent fasting habit. At this point, we can click preview and get an idea of how the results would look like. This is nice, but not exactly what I want. As this is a simple yes, no property, I don't really need an actual heat map. So we head over to the style settings. I'm okay with the title font size, background color, and having no shadow. The fill the screen option would scale the resulting view to expand to the whole width of our node. I don't need that, so I leave it unchecked. The first thing I change is to uncheck the option Show Cell Indicators. This removes the little legend at the bottom of the heat map. We set the cell shape to circle. Alternatively, we can have rounded cells or set them to be square. To make the result look less cramped, we can define a minimum width and height of 20 pixels for each cell. The plugin comes with a few predefined themes. If you select one of those, you can see the related rules. And this is where we change the heat map into a pure tracking view. We select the default theme, delete the last two rules and modify the remaining ones. The first rule is that if the contributions, that means the tracked property, is higher than or equal to zero and less than one, which is false, then I want the indicator to be red. The second rule says that if the contributions are equal to or greater than one, which would be true, and less than two, then the indicator shall be green. Once again, we can preview this if we want, or we just hit save and see the result directly in our node. Okay, technically this works. But it's not very pretty, is it? And this is where the contribution graph plugin makes life easy for us. Instead of having to edit the source code, we can simply click on this little icon up here, which shows up if we hover over the graph and modify the settings as we wish. So let's make a few changes. First, I change the cell shape back to rounded. At the rules section, I set the cell color to match my notes background color for both rules. But wait, I hear you say, we won't see anything. And you're right, of course. If I click on preview, we see that we see not much at all. Let's change this by going back to the rules. There are these little fields here where it says emoji. Here, we will add a red dot for the first rule and a green dot for the second one. Checking the preview, this looks pretty good. We click on save and there you go. One last tip, if we are bothered by all the red dots for days that are still in the future, we can go back to the graph settings and remove the end date so that the graph ends at the current date automatically. Much cleaner. Now, let's copy the whole code block, paste it below and go into the graph settings for that one. First, 
we change the graph type to git style. We don't change anything else in the basic settings, but under style settings, we will find a new property called start of the week. For me, it's Monday. We also enable the fill the screen option. Then we click save, and just like that, we have the git style version of the same tracker. If we'd rather track a different habit, we simply go back to the graph settings, and under basic settings, enter a different property from our daily notes. I will take workout. We change the title accordingly and click save. Now let's copy this code block, paste it below and open a graph settings once more. I don't work out every day. On some days I prefer to walk instead, but this still counts as sport and I want to have a yearly overview of my sport activities. Let's set this up. First, we change the title to sport. Then we change the graph type to calendar and under page property, we enter sport. Under style settings, we disable the fill the screen option and click save. Now we have a consolidated and compact view of our sports activity for the whole year. As you can see, it is very fast and simple to set up and customize these graphs. Now let's take a look at actual heat maps. In my daily notes, I have a property called challenge two, which is a numeric field for tracking the number of push-ups I did on the respective day. Contrary to before, a heat map is actually quite useful for tracking this. So we press Ctrl and P for the command palette, search for the contribution graph command and hit enter. In the dialog, we enter push-ups as a title and choose month track as the graph type. This time we will track the 180 latest days. The source folder is still the one with the daily notes. We use our created property as the date field and the challenge to page property as the count field. Under style settings, we enable build the screen, set the minimum width to 10 pixels and the minimum height to 20 pixels. We select the ocean theme and customize the rules. Now, I know that I'm currently able to do 40 to 50 push-ups in one set. So I define the rules accordingly. We click save and have a very nice heat map of our push-up performance during the last 180 days. The last thing I want to show with this plugin is a heat map calendar instead of the month track graph we just did. While we are not lazy, we are efficient. So we copy the block, paste it below and open the graph settings. We change the graph type to calendar, go to basic settings and set the start of the week to Monday. Again, that's my personal preference. We change the cell size back to the default values by clicking on the pixel value next to each slider. Then we just click save and it took us all of 30 seconds to have a nice yearly calendar heat map. I think you can see that this plugin is quite easy to use, which is already the first item on my list of pros. A simple dialogue for creating and customizing graphs. Additionally, and as long as you don't need more than various calendar views and a heat map, it is fairly flexible with the various weekly, monthly and annual views. The style settings are extensive and easy to use as well. I also like that I'm not limited to colors, but can easily use emojis in the graphs. There's only one thing that I don't like that much, and that's the fact that data sources are limited to folder paths or tags. It would be great to have an option to use queries here. I think this plugin is great for tracking consistency as well as intensity and progress of habits. Filling in our little criteria table, I have to say that the contribution graph plugin does not support charts or text summaries. However, it is great for heat maps and various calendar views. In terms of usability, I give it a full 5 stars out of 5. For versatility, it gets 3 out of 5. All in all, this is a solid plugin that even absolute beginners can easily use. Did you know that not subscribed viewers create more than 80% of the overall watch time on this channel? If you ever enjoyed my videos, please could you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button? It helps the channel more than you know. And the better it does, the more high quality content I can create for you. Thank you. Next up, the Habit Calendar plugin. This plugin is intended to be used in combination with DataView.js and comes with a few settings. Let's take a look at those first. As you can see, the settings are rather straightforward. I only make sure that the start of the week is set to Monday and leave the rest unchanged. As before, we start by tracking our intermittent fasting habit. To do so, we add this DataView.js script. By the way, you can find instructions and examples for writing your own at the plugin's website, the link to which is of course in the description below. This query gets the current date and extracts the year from that date. After that, it calculates the current month. The next block is a simple DataView query creating a table that shows a green or red dot emoji for challenge one. Remember, this is our intermittent fasting habit based on the fields value in my daily notes. It also returns the cutlery emoji as the column name for the table. The last step is to render the result as a calendar using the habit calendar plugin. Back in reading or preview mode, we get a nice overview of the current month in the daily indicator for this habit. 
What is really nice about the Habit Calendar plugin is that we can easily track multiple habits of different types on the same calendar sheet. Here is another DataView.js query. It's also for the current month, but instead of a single habit, we now track six habits at the same time. These include walk, workout, challenge one, intermittent fasting, sleep quality, challenge two, my push-ups, and challenge three, the crunches. All of those are of course part of the front matter in our daily notes. Switching to reading view, we can now see a very compact and easy to read monthly view of all our habits. Of course, we are not limited to the current month. Here is an example for the same query, but showing results for the previous month. As you can see, we just modified to calculate the first date of the previous month and then extract the year and month for that date. The rest is the same. What I like about the Habit Calendar plugin is the possibility to combine multiple habits and track them in a single view. And once you're familiar with DataView and DataView.js, you are quite flexible in querying your notes. Lastly, and this is more of a cosmetic thing, it's nice that we can combine text and emojis. Unfortunately, there is a fairly steep learning curve if you're not familiar with writing queries at all. Yes, the examples on the website are helpful, but it still takes quite some time to be able to use them properly. Having said all that, I think this plugin is great for getting a comprehensive overview of multiple habits, something that I did not find with the other ones. Looking at our criteria table, we see that the habit calendar plugin is exactly that, a calendar view of your habits. There are no charts, heat map, or text summaries. Given the learning curve, I rate the ease of use with two stars. For versatility, I will go with two stars as well, only because we can use queries for the data source. The third plugin on my list is Tracker. It allows us to collect data from our nodes and use various visualizations to track pretty much anything. You can find very extensive documentation and plenty of examples on the plugin's website. The link is of course in the description. Now let's see how it does with our use cases. Here is the code snippet we will use to track the intermittent fasting property in our daily notes. Remember, the property name is challenge1. Data can come from various sources including tags, front matter, text, etc. In our case, we set the search type to front matter. The search target is the name of the property we want to track, in this case challenge1. We call this data set fasting and define January the 1st, 2024 as the start date. For end date, we set the value to 0D. This means that the plugin will always assume the current date to be the end date. Now we just tell the plugin where to find the nodes, which is of course the folder with our daily nodes. The last part of this code block deals with formatting the calendar view. We want a monthly view where the week starts on Monday and colors of our choice are used. After switching to reading view, we see a very nice calendar element showing on which days we managed to do intermittent fasting and also connecting consecutive days to show a streak. So that's a very nice and clean view. We can easily add more insights to this by using the tracker's summary syntax. Here is an example which looks for the same property in the front matter of our daily notes. But instead of creating a calendar view, we now tell it to write a summary that returns the longest streak of intermittent fasting, the longest break and the current streak. Going back to reading view, we can see how it looks. Here is a more advanced version of the same principle. Looking at the tracker code, we can see that it still looks for front matter properties, but this time it checks for the properties workout and walk in my daily notes. The time frame is the same. The data set name represents what we are tracking. There is a major difference in the month section. Instead of using colors to highlight days, we now switched to the annotation mode, which lets us use emojis, one per track property, which should be displayed on each day where the respective property is true. Below that, we have the same summary code for each of these two properties. You will have noticed that the tracker code blocks are part of Obsidian callouts. In fact, they are nested callouts. There is one for the calendar view and one for the summary text. And both of those are encapsulated by a third one called multi-column. This only works if you have the multi-column plugin installed. The benefits of this become clear as soon as we switch to the reading view. Now we have the calendar view with both tracked properties on one side of our node and the streak information for both of them on the other side. Clearly, Visualizing streaks and yes, no data works quite well. Now let's look at what the plugin can do with numbers. In our example, with the number of push-ups we have been tracking in our daily notes under the property challenge two. Here is the code for this. The first part should look familiar. Looking for the property challenge two in the front matter of our daily notes for all the notes created on or after 
January the 1st, 2024 until today. What is new? is the part for formatting our bar elements. Here we define a title for the chart and the y-axis. We also deactivate the legend, which makes the last two lines obsolete, but we leave them in there just in case we want to turn the legend on later. The second tracker code block is again a text summary, but this time it does not tell us anything about a streak, but rather the maximum, average and minimum repetitions we did for this challenge during the defined time frame. In reading view, we can then see a neat bar chart and the respective text information. I want to show two more chart types with this plugin. The first one being a bullet chart. This is really useful if you don't just want to track what happened, but also your progress towards a defined goal. Once again, we use the push-ups as an example. The tracker code block for this starts in the same way, but then deviates. For this chart type, we can define a fixed scale, which we set to 1.1, and whether it shall expand to the full node width, which we don't want right now. Then there are the details for the bullet chart itself. Title is once again push-ups. For orientation, we choose vertical. Now, if our target is to do 12,000 push-ups over the course of one year, and that's just 33 per day on average, then we can define our ranges as 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000 respectively. Combined with these numbers, we then define range color codes for each range. In this example, they are red, yellow, and green. The value we want to track is the sum of the values in the property field, meaning it adds up all the repetitions I did in this period. The units are reps or repetitions. We also set a color for the value bar. In our case, we also want to show the marker, which is our target, and the marker value is 12,000. Lastly, the marker color shall be white. All this results in a bullet chart like this one. The defined ranges in their respective colors, the target marker at 12,000, and the value bar at just shy of 2,000 repetitions at the moment. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, so far we have been using values from our daily nodes as front matter. But what if I want to visualize data that I don't track daily, but only occasionally and then as inline fields? I do that with my body mass index and body fat percentage. Look at this code block. Here we set the search type to DV field, which means it looks for inline fields in the nodes, and the search target to BMI and FAT respectively. These are the inline fields that I'm using. The folder is the same because I add this information to the daily node of the day on which I measure these values. Again, this is not daily, it's not even exactly weekly, but occasionally. We also have a few new parameters for this chart type. We set the accumulate parameter to false. If it were true, the results would be added up instead of displayed individually, and I don't want this right now. Then we set the aspect ratio to 3 to 1, and in this case, we also want the chart to fill the full page width. We also wanted to ignore zero values, so we don't have a bunch of gaps in our chart. The chart itself is a line chart, and the details for this are defined in the line section. I think by now these are quite clear, and I don't need to go through each of them in detail. Suffice to say that they let you customize the look and feel of your chart elements, such as labels, lines, borders, and the legend. And this is how it looks like in reading view. A single, simple to read chart showing the evolution of both properties. To make it even easier to read, I color coded each line to match the respective axis. The tracker plugin supports even more charts, which is also what I like most about it. It is extremely versatile in both the data it can collect and in supporting various visualization styles. As you have seen, it also lets us use colors or emojis in the calendar view. What is missing is an actual heat map. So if this is a must for you, then the contribution graph plugin is probably a better fit. Additionally, the learning curve is notable. Personally, I understand that providing more functionality and flexibility also increases complexity, but it might not be everybody's cup of tea. Completing our criteria table, we see that the tracker plugin can do everything except heat maps. Due to the somewhat challenging syntax, I read its ease of use with three out of five stars. In terms of versatility, I give it a full five stars. Yes, I know heat map is missing, but there are just so many other things you can do quite easily that I think it deserves them. I promised you a bit of bonus content and here it comes. Sometimes a simple table is all we need. Here's an example based on a DataView.js query that you might find useful. This query searches for nodes in our daily nodes folder where the inline field weight has a value greater than zero. It then creates a table with four columns. The name of the node, which in my case is also the date, the weight, the BMI or body mass index, and fat percentage values based on the respective inline fields. Additionally, it calculates the averages for each column 
and shows them in the bottom row. And the result is a clean and simple overview like this table. Compared to the previous visualizations, this might not be spectacular, but it doesn't have to be. Simple is good. With all these options, we can easily build a dashboard highlighting the most relevant tracking information in the way we want them to be visualized. I also prepared such a dashboard based on my own. As always, this should serve as an inspiration only. Your dashboard can, and most likely will, look different. I like having a quick navigation block at the top of the page. This is an embedded element using the Dynamic Embed plugin. After that, I have three main sections. The first one is Quick Status. Here, I have four bullet charts showing my goal and progress towards push-ups and crunches for this year, and the goal and current values for my BMI and body fat percentage. This allows me to see how I'm doing with a single glance in these four areas that are relevant for me. The next section is Details and lets me see specific information about my habits. In my case, that's intermittent fasting with my 15 latest body measures next to it and my sport activities. All of them are not just visualized but also supported with the respective streak information or summary. The last section shows me how things have evolved over time, in my case for the current year. And that's all I put there. Well, what is your preferred option? Or do you have a completely different approach? Let me know in the comments. Let me also know if you have any questions, issues or ideas. As always, I will be happy to listen and do what I can with your feedback. Now, putting this together was quite some work and I'm happy to share the result based on a pay what you want model. At least at the time of recording this, this might change in the future. And yes, pay what you want also includes nothing. It basically depends on how much value you see in it and if you can afford supporting me. By the way, support does not have to be financial only. So if you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. It really helps the channel a lot. And if you could also share it with whoever might be interested, well, that would be great too. If you need any help or have questions, the YouTube comments might not be the easiest way to interact with each other. Alternatively, you can find me on your preferred social media platform. The links to all my profiles are in the description. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.